that I have my garden gnome here ready to get glazed, been fired one time. And uh, before I do that, let's talk about the different type of, types of glazes here. First of all, I want you to remember that when you get a glaze, um, the glaze, the color of the glaze is generally not the color you see fired. So for example, I don't know if you can see that color, it's kind of a rust color, and this is actually green. So you see that it looks like rust, but it is actually green. So make sure that when you're looking at these, you can either look at the sample or make sure you read the name of what it is before you start glazing it. Another thing you need to think about is if you get glaze, you can see this one here, you can hear it. This one here is all dried out. Someone may lift the lid off or um, maybe um, it just over time, you know, it wasn't on tight and it just all went away, the water's gone, but this is not something you need to throw away. Just add a little bit of water to this, mix it up, and it'll dissolve again, and it'll be ready to use. So don't throw something like this away. This is perfectly fine. If it's dry, it can still be used. You just have to moisten it back up and put some water in there. Um, I've got a couple colors here, but I wanted to show you this right here. This is underglaze, and um, I sometimes students get confused on what underglaze is versus regular glaze. Like I was saying, the, there's a big difference between glaze and underglaze. The biggest difference is that glaze will go on after a piece has been fired. One time it's been bisked. So that's when you put glaze on and it's a glassy light coating. It's shiny, okay? Um, the, you can get matte glazes, but um, it also seals the pores and it makes it waterproof. Um, this is underglaze. The difference between underglaze and glaze is underglaze is really meant to go on before it is bisque fired. So before it's fired one time. So when it's leather hard, you can paint the underglaze on and then fire it and then put a clear coat of glaze on top of that. Um, I don't really care for the underglaze. I don't think that it is the best solution. Um, some people feel like with underglaze, they can be more detailed. And I don't know if that's true, but um, I also have students that put underglaze on after it's been fired once. You can do that, but it kind of defeats the purpose of underglaze. So um, with underglaze, you have to, you fire it before it's been disc fired, and then you put a clear coat on top of it. So we generally don't use underglaze. For our students, we're just going to use regular glaze. So there's various types of glazes. Um, they also um, fire to different temperatures. So you have to be careful when you um, fire these. Some glazes fire to a hotter temperature and we have to change that setting in the kill. So I'm gonna go ahead and start glazing this. And to do this, um, I'm going to do this bigger area. I think I'm gonna do this area right here first. And it doesn't really matter which brush I have. I don't want a really small one, but I don't want something that's huge either. Maybe this one would work fine. We'll try it out. So I've got some glaze here, and this is a red glaze. Even though it looks pink, it will be red. And again, you just have to look at the bottle and read it or make a test before you do it, test it out. Now, when you put this glaze on, you wanna put three coats on. And if you don't do that, it'll be um, translucent. You'll be able to see through it and it's not gonna be you know, super solid. So you wanna make sure that you get good solid coats on there. And what I usually do if I have a big area is I paint the whole thing and then I go back over and paint it again because when I get done with the first coat, um, it's about dry when I'm about done and I go back over and paint it again and then I paint it again and Generally, I say don't get a whole bunch of glazes out. Just paint one color at a time. So um, some of my students, they're like, well, I want to paint five colors on here. So I'll get them all out and get them all ready, put them in the little dishes, um, and I will paint those. But what happens is you don't have enough time to do that if you're putting three coats on. So just get one glaze color out at a time. And um, when you get the three coats on, then get another color out. And make sure that when you're done, if you put it in a little cup, that you scoop all the remaining glaze back into the bottle. 
and you could just do that with your brush. And see here, I'm not even using a little cup. I'm just scooping it right out of the container. And I can do that because no one else needs it right now. So I can go ahead and, and do it, but you may have to put it in a little container and then um, scoop as much as you can back into the bottle when you're done and then wash it in the sink and uh, you'll have your container for the next color. So um, you can see I'm just getting my coat on here. And I'll just continue to paint this on here until I get, I'm satisfied, I got my three coats on. You wanna be careful not to get in on areas that you don't, you want another color. If you do, if you get some on an area it's not supposed to be on there, just get a sponge and uh, or a paper towel and wipe it off. But I would definitely wipe it off. Don't try just to glaze over it because if you glaze over it, generally you still see that color below it. So don't try to just glaze over it. Um, wipe it off and then um, put your color you need on there. Now I have some students that use masking tape sometimes to mask off areas. And you can do that if, if you feel like you need to. Um, that's perfectly fine. Pull the masking tape off and then paint your other area and that's okay. And you can see that this dries rather, rather quickly, you know, depending on how much water is in the glaze. If you're finding the glaze is a little too thick, um, it's water soluble. So just add a little bit of water to it. You know, if it's a little too thin, then you may have to put more coats on than just three coats. So just be aware that three coats is the general rule, but it's possible if it's really thin that you could need more. Um, this thickness is perfectly fine. I think three coats will be fine with this. And so I'm not too concerned about that. Looks like I got a little piece of debris in here and I'm just gonna pull this off. Just paint over it. And don't worry about some of the brush strokes. I mean, try to keep them as even as possible. But what happens with the glaze is it melts and it'll kind of fuse together. So I'm just gonna continue painting this on here and I'll turn it over. Now I'm going to put glaze on the bottom so it will not have a dry foot. And if it doesn't have a dry foot, I have to put um, a stilt underneath when I fire it. If I don't, you know what happens. It would fuse to whatever it touches. So this glaze would um, attach to the kill shelf and it would be a real problem. So um, I'm still gonna put glaze on the bottom of this and I'll just use a stilt. So we'll be good to go. Some people like a dry foot in some things, I like a dry foot, but for something like this, I like to paint the whole thing. And um, I think it'll do a better job. I'm gonna try to really get in all the nooks and crannies. I hate to see when kids don't glaze like areas and you see little white areas where they missed or areas where they only went over at one time and it's really thin. So I'm gonna try to avoid that and make sure I get a nice coat good three coats on every surface, so that's important. So just kind of do it in, in a fashion that you know where you've glazed one coat and two coats and three coats, and then um, you should be fine. But um, often kids will be disappointed in their stuff and they don't get a nice smooth color and coating on there. And it's generally because they weren't careful about when they glazed it. Not, you know, they have to remember where they glazed and where they didn't glaze. And you can see it turns kind of light colored here. And this will be red again, it's not gonna be pink. It'll be red because, well, it's, um, I've painted this on here before, so I know it's red. And we've done some test tiles with this red before. So I know we're good. Some students paint this on here and they think it's pink and it's not pink and they're kind of surprised when it comes out when it's red. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint this. I'm try to speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay, in my last video, I got my, my uh, gnome hat painted. You'll notice I painted it mostly red, but then I put some black here and blend, I'm trying to blend some black in and make it a little bit darker. So it's more of a maroon color and not just a red and some variations, some paint variations. Remember when you paint with glaze, you don't have to paint all the same color. You can mix colors or you can layer colors. The thing is, is you don't know what effect you would get from this until you actually fire it. So that's the problem with glaze. You don't know what it's gonna look like, which is kind of cool in some ways because when you come in, you get a surprise and hopefully it's not a bad surprise. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glaze um, the beard now and I'm gonna start working on the beard and uh, then I'll go back and probably hit the body and the nose and I haven't figured out what color no I'm gonna do with nose yet. So. Let me get a good coat on my um, beard really quickly. 